I'm not overreacting to anything. Uh, I'm I'm simply uh, furthering a question that I already had yesterday because it happened again today. And I think it's foolish to think that the 49ers are giving Brandon Allen equal reps to Trey Lance and Sam Darnold. I think it's completely foolish to look at that and think that the 49ers are doing that because they've had injuries at the quarterback position before. That's just my take. I think that's crazy. I don't think you operate a team that way. In other words, planning for all of the injuries that you're going to get. Um, you can talk about Brock Purdy's elbow all you want, but the bottom line is is he's back. And uh, so if he's practicing, why is Brandon still getting as many looks as the other guys? I mean, how would you answer that? Why is Brandon Allen getting and, – and for those of you, that I, I think the, the pitch count today, Brock had 21 reps. I think Trey had 11, Sam had 10, and Brandon had 9. Why? Because they're not sure about uh, their QB depth chart. They don't, they're not sure about QBs 2, 3, and 4. They're sure about number 1, but just in case he does get hurt and you know QB1 has gotten hurt here before, they want to make sure that they know where they're going to go with QB2, QB3, and QB4. And I don't know if they know. They might know that Trey Lance is not the guy and therefore Brendan Allen's going to be QB3 and Sam's going to be QB2 and they're looking to trade Trey Lance, or they might be wondering if Brendan Allen can be QB two, three, or four. They may not know. I wonder how everyone would feel if the Trey Lance era with the 49ers ends and uh, and he never really got a look. How would that make everybody feel? Well, he got a look. He See, got many looks. I agree. And this is... Now, I agree with you, but you know that a lot of people don't agree with us. Right. It's okay? because they don't understand the way this works. And just like James Wiseman... Never got a look. Never got a look. James Wiseman got many, many, many looks in terms of his rookie year, practice, scrimmages, offseason, summer league. And I know he was hurt during the championship year, but they got a look at James Wiseman. And when you look at a quarterback, like what does get a look mean? Does that mean just in real regular season football? Or does that mean meeting rooms? practices, OTAs, mini camps, and all the rest of it, getting a look means absolutely everything that a quarterback does on a football team. Well, I just think about it this way, too. You know, you, th- those comparisons to James Wiseman come up a lot. And I-, I-, I could almost argue that in the NBA, we do have a number of examples. Jermaine O'Neal is a name that comes to mind, like big men who look like baby giraffes who were lost for a year or two, and then all of a sudden, as they became 22 or 23 or 24, like they do, they pop, and they become really viable NBA players. Maybe not superstars, but viable NBA players. Uh, If you look around the league at quarterback, I would argue that you can usually tell pretty quick. Like, who's the quarterback? And I know that some people will bring up Josh Allen, and maybe that's a, a, a fair answer to a degree. He really popped in year three however he also popped in year two as compared to year one in year one josh allen uh had a 52.8 percent completion percentage 10 touchdowns and 12 interceptions the very next year while he wasn't great he went from 52 percent to 58 percent in completions and he went 20 touchdowns nine picks then in year three he became a star so that's one example to a degree. But when you when you say that most of the quarterbacks around the league who have become good, they're good. They're good right away. You can see it at least. I don't know what everyone thinks about Justin Herbert. But do you remember when you first saw him, the Tarod Taylor thing, the accidental injection, and Justin got thrown into the game. He wasn't even supposed to start yet. And it was like, oh, oh. And he never lost the gig again, and now he's going to make $52 million a year. You know, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers. I remember watching Aaron's first game when he sat there behind Brett forever, and he got thrown in there, and everyone went, oh, this looks, thank you, it looks pretty good. You can usually see it pretty quick what these guys look like, so... I'm with you, man. The the idea that we're in year three and people are still saying that Trey didn't get a chance, uh, I reject that. I like 
He's gotten a chance. They've been around him for three years, and they're obviously unimpressed. And I wonder what last year would have been like if he didn't get hurt, how much of a chance he would have gotten. Would he have gotten four more games, two more games, six more games the whole year? Would he have gotten better? We'll never know because he got hurt. And Trey Lance now has been hurt a couple of different times. And because of that, it's hard to tell like how much of a chance he got. One thing is certain, the guy who came in and replaced him, Brock Purdy, took the job and elevated it, and you only lost one game, and that's because he himself got hurt. So I don't know what you're supposed to do in terms of a championship-caliber team that's ready to win right now. I don't think that any right-minded Niner fan is looking at the team and saying, oh, Trey Lance should start right over Brock Purdy if Brock Purdy's healthy. Brock Purdy's going to start, and so what does that mean for Trey Lance? Should he be a backup? Well, he could be a backup. But if Sam, Dar- Sam Darnold's a better backup than Trey Lance is, then you, want Sam. then you want Sam because if Brock gets hurt and you want to win games and you're a championship team, then you want to go to Sam and you don't want to go to Trey if you think Sam's better. I guess the, the, the where this goes, though, is because of the, the draft position, because of the excitement. And by the way, I, I want to also pass along a little background uh, in terms of why we're here today. There were a couple of things that we wanted, like information from practice. And Tim Kawakami's on the show today as well. Uh, and, and he wrote about this uh, on social media and beyond. And I look forward to talking to him about it. There's two things I really wanted to look uh, for. Number one, how many reps did Brandon Allen get? Were they essentially equal again with the twos and threes? The answer was yes. And then secondly, yeah, let's hear about the performances of the quarterbacks. And just the real quick synopsis is Brock Purdy, while still not great, was much better more efficient, higher percentage of, of completions than he was yesterday. Um, Sam was largely fine. A couple of really nice throws. Uh, Brandon Allen, you know, whatever, I think two for four. He probably only threw the ball four times. Trey Lance went two for five, and two of his misses were running backs out in the flat, and he threw the ball at their feet. So the second thing is, is how did Trey look? And the answer is not good. He didn't look good. It's just practice. But here we are, and I just, again, it feels like there's so many tea leaves heading toward the 49ers feeling a certain way. And so the question becomes, you draft someone three overall, how do you feel if that ends before he even gets five starts? Like, are you okay with that? And, and by the way, I'll answer, yeah. If, if they win. If you're, well, yes. A, if you win, and B, if your evaluation is that he can't do it. I, I accept that. I don't accept what you did in order to do to, to get him. That's obviously a huge mistake. But if your evaluation is, we got a team that can win and this guy can't do it, I accept that. Like, I don't need to go through some trial period with Trey to sort of, like, prove it in games if, if that's what the f- entire 49er brass feels like he can't do it or there's someone there who's better at it, I'm okay with it. But I can tell a lot of people don't feel that way. I'm only okay with it if you win and Trey Lance doesn't go on to become a great player elsewhere. Sure. Because if you don't win, let's say Brock Purdy does have a setback and he does get hurt and you have to go to Sam Darnold. And you know what? Sam starts seeing ghosts again. And Sam is not able to do the job. And maybe Brandon Allen comes in and... You've got everybody but Trey, and you go 9-8, and eight, and you become a wild card team, and you lose on the road in the first week of the playoffs, and that sucks. And you traded Trey Lance to whatever team, and he goes out there and he shows you that, man, he is as good as you thought he was. You drafted him number three overall thinking you didn't draft him number three overall as a charity case or as a reach. You thought that he was that good. Yep. So if you give up on him, you're basically saying we believe that we were wrong when we drafted him at that point, totally. or we have somebody who's better. And you know, all the best, Trey Lance, go out there and do your thing. If you move off of Trey Lance and you don't win, and he goes out and plays well, then I have a problem. That's a with problem. It. That's sure, a big problem. That's the only scenario. It's the though. James Wiseman conversation. Yes, and yes. or even Jordan Poole to a lesser extent because there was well, more complicated circumstances around Jordan Poole totally. than Trey Lance. I'll, I'll focus mainly on James Wiseman in this conversation. And so far, what we saw from Wiseman in Detroit was hey, good for you, James. Good little, good little run. You're not, you're not so good that you are. 
you're making us feel bad well, about what? what we did. James went out and averaged about 14 and 7 in 28 minutes yeah, or so. Yeah, he could have done that with the Warriors, too, exactly. if they didn't care fine. about winning. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm with, the Wiseman thing is interesting, right? Because the Warriors are going to continue to pitch to people that we we love James and we would have had time to develop James, except for we're trying to win a championship, so we didn't have time. So he needs reps and he needs him somewhere else. I think there's some truth to that. I also think the Warriors would not have moved him if they really thought he was going to be a star. So now you move the conversation over to Trey Lance. There is, to a degree, some of the same thing. The 49ers are ready to win now. Nobody's got time to develop him. But because he's a quarterback, because this is the NFL, this is the biggest fishbowl position in all of sports, because of all of that, I think it's even more so. You do not diminish time in your organization when you think you have a star at quarterback. So they clearly don't. And their behavior is suggesting all of that stuff. From Sam to what they're saying about him and Brandon and what they're saying to about the reps him. reps, too. So, to me, that's where this is trending. 